Uganda is a country endowed with various lakes and rivers. However, a total of 9 million Ugandans still lack access to clean and safe water. Wobolenzi, for example, is a small town in Luero district in the central part of the country. It has a population of 22,400 people. According to the figures from the Ministry of Water and Environment, at least 57% of the population in this town have access to piped water, 10% have access to other sources like protected springs and boreholes, while the rest can hardly have access to a clean water source. The boreholes were very old. We tried to repair them by joining the pipes but failed. They were breaking down all the time. As a result, we couldn't get clean water, especially during the dry season. This situation prompted Network for Water and Sanitation Networks, Uganda, a national NGO in partnership with the Minister of Water and Environment, the Wobulenzi Town Council, Luero District Local Government, and the World Bank Institute to intervene with a program to improve access to safe water in Wobulenzi Town through improved governance in the water sector in the year 2008. The program has four components. One is the capacity building component for networks and the community stakeholders. Two, the communication component. Three, implementation of the social accountability tools. And four is the M and E component. Community scorecards are devoted to collecting and disseminating information about the water situation to advocate for change. Community scorecards promote the direct participation of the community and the formation of partnership between water users and water providers to improve water services. The community comes together and they analyze the problems they have, like for this time it was water, and they prioritize the changes that they want to see happen in that sector. So the second one, we have uh, the service providers meeting, where the service providers also analyze their service provision and the water needs, and they also prioritize areas that they think should be catered for. From the first two meetings, the community meeting, the output is a community scorecard, which is actually a, a chart where the community have the priorities and they've scored against those priorities. So when they come to the interface meeting, the community presents its card and the service providers also present their cards and their scores. Now they discuss these two and agree on which priorities to take forward and which scores to agree on. So that final card is called the Joint Action Plan. Victor Kibirige. A resident of Kigulu Zone in Wobblenzi Town Council participated actively in this program after experiencing numerous water challenges. She is lucky to have a tap in her home fixed back in 2006. Unfortunately, she cannot predict when water will be flowing in the tap. Thank God it rained yesterday and she was able to harvest some rainwater. Water would be flowing normally. But the service providers don't seem to be having enough money to run the operations. To make matters worse, they never get back to us for support. The program carried out two surveys, one at the beginning of the program in order to have a baseline and another one year later as a follow-up survey to see how things have changed after applying social accountability tools. Here yeah, both surveys, the baseline survey and also the follow-up survey, we are sample surveys. And... Um, the sample, the sampling design was a stratified one where we looked at the core and also we looked at the peri-urban areas. And uh, we selected the villages at the first stage and the second stage we were able to select households uh, which, were, which we interviewed. Now, before you select the households to interview, you had to undergo a comprehensive listing exercise to 
to enable us to uh, construct a, a frame from which to pick the households for interview. Um, and we use the simple random sampling to select households for interview, which we are selected to get a representative sample. Because the concern for the sample surveys is a representative sample. You need to have a representative sample to be able to make an inference about the entire population. Dissemination of results from the surveys and community scorecards was crucial to empower community providers, water board and other stakeholders. There are two different providers in Wobblenzi. Trundit, operating under the Output Best Aid contract, supplies water to Wobblenzi Town Council. Bukalasa Agricultural College, a non-output based aid provider, supplies water to the college and its neighboring villages. Series of meetings engaging the community and the providers were held in order to dialogue about problems and make agreements to improve service in a joint action plan. We invite them at the town council, they participate in the budgeting, then thereafter we even come back to these areas, convene meetings and invite the other public which did not attend those meetings so that we explain to them what we expect from government, what we expect from local revenue, how we are distributing that money into our different sectors for development. And it generates a lot of discussion between the two. One group says this is our issue and then the other group also responds. The community is already seeing results. The water technician from Bukalasa Agricultural College is visiting Charles Semakula, a client who has just complained of a leaking tap. Semakula uses the water to operate his coffee nursery enterprise with over 110,000 seedlings. Because of improved communication, he's always informed of the breakdowns and irregularities in supply. The water technician sometimes uses such moments to receive payments for water use. The net worth intervention has made it much easier for the community around to understand that water is not free to every person, that water must be paid for in order to maintain the working systems. Trondit, the other provider, has made several new water connections and several repairs in its area. A community radio in the busiest part of Wobelenzi town is one of the communication media used by Trundit, the water board and water users committees to pass on information on water issues to the users. When there is any problem, we communicate. When there is going to be a breakdown, we communicate. When we are going to collect money to people, you just not collect that, you just communicate to them. Just as what it was saying, us to be transparent for social accountability on what we are all doing. Community leaders and project staff have today come here to an evaluation meeting of the revised joint action plan. And from the feedback we are getting, so far there's been more than actually what was expected eh? because they revised the plans and a lot has happened. So as a trainer, I feel like yes, Networks has achieved what they wanted to achieve. Uh, where people are holding the service providers accountable, where service providers are accounting back to the people, but most importantly, the water provision, the quality of water has improved in the area. I think that is also constructive and a sustainable way forward. If we can build that uh, in among our communities who are being served and among the service providers to expect this that kind of dialogue, then we hope that this can continue over. It's not a one-off thing when uh, someone comes from the center and so finance or Minister of Water to go and check on the performance when they are not actually consuming the service. The program has demonstrated that social accountability tools are very powerful in improving service provision within the small towns and with that the Minister of Water and Environment has requested networks to use the same tools in Busia and Rukunjiri Town Council.